Hello everyone, I am Katie. I am the face behind all of the voiceover you're about to watch and I just wanted to pop on, say hello, and we are just going to jump right in here and get going. Let's jump in. I am using Super Sculpty and I am using the oven baked clay. Okay, so you can briefly see here, I kind of squeezing it a little bit. I have already conditioned this clay for a few minutes, so it's starting to get soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start working with it. So now I'm just gonna break this off into a couple of chunks. First, we'll just jump right in and start with this first chunk I did. It's the size of, I don't really have a clue. It's the size of something about that size. We're gonna work on the ocean part of this cup first. So I would like to color my clay because I don't want to have to try to paint it after it has been baked. So try to make my steps a couple less and get the overall look I'm going for without having to use paint. So I am using some alcohol ink in here. This one I believe was Pool from Tim Holtz. Um, I don't have it in front of me at the moment, but I think that's what it was. So I just kind of make a reservoir, I squirt some ink in there, and I just keep working the ink into the clay until it is nice and mixed. Add more color if you need to use more color until you have the desired color that you are going for. I'm For this first one, I'm going for more of a um, darker blue. So it's gonna take me a couple of work it in and squirts to, <laughs> <laughs> to get the right color. So here we are <laughs> adding a couple of squirts to get our color a little bit darker. And then we're just going to work that in the same day with the er, the same way we did as before. Okay, so I have decided that I like this color a lot but I do want a little bit of it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in, split that in half and add a little bit more blue and I'll work that in and probably call it good after this one. All right, I think I'm pretty much satisfied. So here are our two colors that we have created with our alcohol inks. There is just a little bit variation not a ton but hopefully it will help me achieve the overall look i'm coming going for so we're going to break off another little piece and we are going to do the same process all over again and we are going to color this one a like a sea foam color i don't remember exactly what color this was um but any color whatever just use whatever we got dark blue light blue and we're gonna go for kind of a sea foamy color on this one okay I'm gonna shut up for a minute and speed this up so you don't have to listen to me go on and on and on now we are moving on to another piece and this time I am going to make some white using white alcohol ink that was dramatic Anyways, same thing. In this, it started to get a little set up again, so I just wanted to condition it just a little bit before I added my ink. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with this for a minute and add my ink. And then you just keep playing, smushing, twisting, pushing, pulling until it's all mixed up. All right, so we are living and we are learning. And my white alcohol ink is definitely not turning my clay white like I need it. So I am just going to um, add some white acrylic paint and mix it in real good instead of using alcohol ink because obviously the ink is going to take a lot more than it will for the acrylic paint. So when you do this, if you're using acrylic paint, you do wanna make sure that you let your clay dry um, completely before baking it or using it. Um, I'm going to wait 24 hours. I don't know what the rule of thumb is. Um, I'm pretty new to coloring my own clay, so I'm playing on 24 hours. I believe that is what is suggested depending on how much you're putting into your clay. But for this amount, what I'm doing, I'm doing 24 hours and it ended up turning out okay, so I'm rolling with that. Thank you. 
Oh yeah, baby, we are done with our colors and everything has dried out just a little bit. So I'm not wearing gloves anymore. Um, after I create whatever I'm doing on my cup, I will let it dry a little bit longer. So anyways, what I'm doing now is I'm taking my uh, foam, sea foamy color and I'm rolling it into a snake shape and then I'm just gonna roll it around my cup to kind of get a measurement of where I'm at and that's a little bit too big so I'm just gonna squish it a little bit and shrink that baby right up to fit around my cup and then I will go ahead and take my other colors and repeat this process. Well, I'm not gonna repeat the process because I already know how long my cup is now. So I'm going to roll it out to match my seafoam color. So I'm gonna go seafoam, light blue, dark blue, and then we will go from there. Oh yeah, baby, that's all done. Now we are just layering them up to our desired stacking. I don't know what I'm talking about. I really should probably be going to bed instead of doing voiceovers. Anyways, okay, so now we have our three colors. I did smash them a little bit, just kind of blend them a little bit, and I'm totally winging this. I have never made ocean waves in my life. I'm just totally thinking in my head that this is gonna work out, and we shall see. So once I have it wrapped around my cup, I'm just going in and I am applying it to my cup, squishing it really tight in there so that it will stay on there nice and well. Um, I try to thin it out the further up to the top I go. And then I do take my finger right along the very top eventually and um, kind of give myself a little rim for when I epoxy. Um, as I'm pushing this out, it is stretching it out and so you're going to get some gaps in there. So I just grab the whole thing around and I just give it a good squeeze to shrink it back up. You can see there how it's kind of getting bubbly. Please excuse my nasty, wintry, dry hands. They are so disgusting and I was gonna wear gloves for this whole video, but I just didn't feel like it. So y'all get to look at my raunchy hands. Okay, so once we have that part all nice and on there, we're gonna go in with our sea foam and we're gonna pull that section down so because I wanted the top, I'm gonna to do two waves, as you've seen on the photo. I wanted the top to be kind of my dark blue and my light blue, and then for my second level, I wanted it to be more of a little tiny bit of light blue, but mostly sea foam green. So I'm just gonna keep pushing on this until I'm happy with the way that's kind of worked. So I'm gonna speed this up until the next step. All right, so now we are going to take our white clay and we are going to make our waves. So I'm just gonna roll this out into a thin snake. Um, I'd say it's probably about a quarter of an inch thick or so. Um, so we're just gonna roll that out. So it's gonna give us a little bit more than the, um, the roundness of our cup and I'm just going to go along the bottom of my seafoam color, and I'm gonna kind of follow the lines where I have created from pushing it down so that we don't have a perfect circle around. You know, these are waves, they're not gonna be perfect. We want a little bit of up and down going on. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> some up and down action. Once we have that all the way around the cup, I am just going to smush that in just a little bit to blend it into my seafoam green and I mean, we're going to do that all the way around the cup. Alrighty, now I have decided that I need to move a little bit more of the blue down into my seafoam so that the blue will show. And I can't even remember if that ended up happening or not, but that was my goal at this point because <laughs> I'm winging it. I've never made this cup before. I've never made waves with clay before. Anyways, I think I already said that. So ramble along. So I'm just pushing some of this blue down into my green. And then um, at some point here in a minute, I like leave everything and then I go grab some tools and throw them down. And then we're gonna start working on um, getting our, oh, our textures and stuff going on. Oh look, I'm out of frame, isn't that nice? I hate watching videos when the cup goes out of frame. There's nothing more annoying. And it's so annoying when people babble too, isn't it? <laughs> sorry not sorry 
like I said, I should be in bed, but instead I'm doing a voiceover. Okay, so some of these tools, like that little like flapper thing, that pink thing right there, that does not belong in with those tools. I don't even know why it's there. So these tools I'm using here, the little pink ones, they are some cheap crap I got in a kit. Um, I don't like them. They, the ends pop out, they really suck. But for this part, I thought it would be, I don't know, I just figured it would work. So I'm just rolling it, um, trying to give it some texture. Oh look, out of frame again, isn't that lovely? Oh, Katie, look, we're out of frame, fix it. Okay, I'm like, so this one sucks, so let's grab a different one. Let's try this one. <laughs> so now I'm gonna just pull up a little bit of the white into our seafoam green. And this is going somewhat okay. It, it doesn't really matter because we're going to do some more to it anyways. Um, trial and error. That's the way all of these things go for me. My first piece. I said that. Don't judge me. Well, not my first piece, but my first ocean piece with clay. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, battling on. Now I'm going to pull down some of the sea foam into my white. And, and now my clay is getting dry and it's getting flaky. I guess. I don't know. It's oven big clay. But anyways. Oh, here. Let's grab a ball thingy. That's going to work nice. So now I'm just rolling it. These are nice. I like these metal ones. Um, I think I got these in a kit as well. I don't, I don't know where I get stuff. Um, anyways, I'm pretty sure these came with something or another. Um, these are nice because the, they're kind of heavy. So the ball just kind of does the work for you and you don't have to apply a bunch of pressure. It just kind of does it for you. So there's no really rhyme or reason what I'm doing here. I am just going over kind of where the white and the sea foam meet to try to blend that in a little bit working it in stretching it up and down you know just kind of trying to get it to blend a bit so i'm going to shut up and i'm going to fast forward this because this is super boring okay here i am again did you miss me no you didn't okay because that was like what one second so now i've kind of gotten the bottom where i like it so i'm going into the top what I'm doing here is I'm kind of pulling down my clay to give me that um, gathered spot so it's raising and once in a while I'll jump back down to the bottom and pull it upwards. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. As you can see here I'm really trying to apply some pressure to get that raised there and um, I had plenty of clay to do it. But one thing I didn't love though what happened is my blue my dark blue overtook the light blue so my light blue just basically disappeared so it is what it is there's i'm, I'm not gonna like tear off clay or shave some off to try to find my light blue again so we went from dark blue to sea foam but it, it works it's fine it, we're going over it in the future anyways so well now that i've talked long enough and we're done with that i'm going in with my white snake again so i'm just gonna oh look at that mess Okay, so we're gonna roll this out a little bit. Excuse my old lady hands. I am not a young chicken anymore. All of you that have beautiful young hands and your nails are done and your hands are not wrinkly, enjoy it because your time will come too. Okay, so back to rolling our little worming here. I don't like worms, I hate worms. I have a fear of worms. What kind of fear is that? Snakes, don't bother me. Worms, mm-mm, I am not doing that. Okay, so here we are going along for our top wave. We're gonna do the same thing as we did on the bottom. We are just gonna go up and down and kind of you know just had the white if it breaks it's okay just to get back on there there's it's it's all gonna be okay because we're gonna blend that all together anyways so i'm gonna go ahead and can't decide if i should stop and fast forward or if i should just give it another minute because it looks like i'm almost done at this point so i might as well just keep you entertained by talking because <laughs> i mean what's better than talking to yourself right when people are gonna watch this and you don't know who's gonna watch it because it's public and people are gonna judge you because there are a lot of people who judge. But that's okay, I really don't care if people judge me because I just have fun in life and that's the whole point of life. Okay, so now that I got that out of the way, a bunch of BS you didn't need to hear. And now we're getting out of frame again. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so our little white wormy thing is on there. Oh look, another cheap tool. So I'm just kind of smooshing this kind of like on the bottom of my ledge there and then I'm pulling in the top of it up to the top just a little bit. I like this tool because of the shape it is. Um, I ended up buying new tools today because 
tell. I'm having a lot of fun with this clay and I figured if I'm going to keep doing this, I needed some better tools. I always start with like the super cheap stuff or stuff I have around the house or whatever because I'm, I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on something. I don't know if I'm going to love it or not. I honestly don't like 3D tumblers. I would never buy one unless it was like, oh, amazing. Um, which I've seen some amazing ones, but anyways, I, I would never drink out of it. I would like use it on my desk or something. Anyways, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm not really sorry. I mean, it is what it is. You're watching this because you want to learn it, obviously. And if what well, I mean, you can watch it in silence or you can listen to me ramble. So congratulations, I'm in a rambling mood. Sometimes when I do these voiceovers, I like do them when I'm like half asleep and can't sleep. But instead you get me when I've had a lot of cake and I'm about to get some hot chocolate too. So my sugar level is about to skyrocket and I'm just going to keep running my mouth. I have nothing good to say. Nope. Can't think of nothing. Okay. So we're still messing with this white stuff trying to give it a good rim job around here and pulling it up and pulling a little bit down I'm really trying to keep that um that raised look though I don't want to lose that because I definitely want to have that height for my wave look and um I'm adding texture on top of these waves so I had this all planned out in my head but I wasn't sure how it was all going to come together so trial and error here people that's what we're doing we're doing it together Okay, so it looks like I decided I wasn't done blending yet. So now I'm going to, it looks like I'm ready to pull up my white and probably pull down some of my blue into that and blend those colors a little bit now that I have my, my, uh, my wave, my whatever, where I want it. So I'm going to shut up for a minute and fast forward because I'm bored. All right, so as you could see back there a minute ago, um, I did go in with the little ball thing again and um, ran with that. So what I'm doing now is I just grabbed a glove and um, I have some rubbing alcohol in that little cup there. And I am just kind of going over it with a little bit of pressure, but not much because I do want to keep a lot of the texture in there, but I did want to smooth it out a little bit. And if I had any you know, dry chunks or whatever. I kind of wanted to get those blended in there and whatnot. So I'm using um, a little bit of rubbing alcohol and just kind of going over it, cleaning it up a little bit, smoothing it out just a little bit, but still leaving texture. And I'll go ahead and shut up and fast forward. All right, as I was fast forwarding, I realized, oh look, I went back in with another little ball thing. I don't even remember what happened here because I did this like a week ago and as I mentioned before, I was winging it. Um, so I must have thought I got maybe got rid of too much texture or I, I, don't, I don't remember why I went back in, but I did for a reason. And it's so lovely that you're so in the center of the frame and you can see every exact detail of what I am working on because I am a professional cup video taker okay so anyways okay um, we're just going in with this round thingy and then eventually I'm gonna go in from the underneath of that first wave and I'm just gonna push up on that you'll see it when I fast forward here in just a second see how I'm pulling that down and I'm lifting up that wave again I must have just squished it too much or didn't like the height or something I, I, I don't remember but I'm, I'm adding some more height to that, to that wave there and some more texture. Okay, let's fast forward. Okay, so if you watched that little last piece and didn't fast forward my fast forward, you saw that I went ahead and I did the same thing to the bottom. I pulled it down a little bit more and now I'm just going back um, in with my one of my little ball tools and I'm pushing that wave back up to give it a little bit more height here.
So here I've decided that I needed to pull down a little bit of blue into my sea foam because it just didn't really happen after everything else I did. So I just rolled out a piece of the blue that I had and I rolled it pretty, pretty freaking skinny. And I just am breaking off just a little section, like maybe a one inch piece there. And I'm trying to tuck it up underneath that wave and just pull it down into my sea foam color. So I'm bringing a little bit of that blue into my sea foam and just blending it in. And I'm gonna do that not all the way around it. Um, well, I am doing it all the way around it, but not continuously. I'm breaking it up into little, um, little sections. So there's just one inch, two inch pieces of blue that blended into the sea foam color. All right, clearly I cannot leave things alone. So now I'm going back in and I'm just kind of doing a little more blending with my ball tool. I really like the way these just kind of, I don't know, it's kind of an effortless blend, um, especially if you don't care if you're getting lines or whatever in there. So anyways, that's what I'm doing is I'm just doing, been doing some more blending and pushing and whatnot, cause I just can't say, I just can't be, okay, that's good, Katie, stop. No, I gotta be like, oh, let's do some more. Let's do some more, let's do it. Ooh, look, another spot, let's do some more. Well, would you look at that? She decided to do some more. All right, I'm going back in with some white here. Um, I guess I needed some more. <laughs> so we're going in with some white, making another little snaky. And then we are going to wrap it around. I do believe I wrapped it around the top wave, if I remember correctly. We're gonna see here in just a second if it ever finishes making this little snake. We're calling it a snake because I don't like worms. Okay. Oh, good grief, come on. Here, I can see it coming, it's coming right now. Oh, almost, almost. Jeez, come on. about flipping time okay so yeah see there's not enough white there I, I just wanted more white I mean it probably would have been fine I mean oh look I'm going under I do remember doing this okay so yes I went I wanted the very bottom of this to um to be white I didn't want any color um on the on the I don't know what that's called on the <laughs> I have several things I could call it um we're gonna call it on the underneath of the wave okay that's what we're doing we're adding white right there that's what i'm gonna do so after i add that little string all along the inside of that and i do go all the way around we're just gonna blend it so i'm gonna fast forward through the blending Okay, I just wanted to jump on a voiceover for this part and be like, I'm not painting. I'm just like using this paintbrush to try to get those little dry balls off of there. <laughs> dry balls. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I'm just dusting my clay off. <laughs> um, that's all I'm doing. I'm not painting. Okay, now I'm going to be painting. I am just using some chalk paint I showed you there. Um, I love chalk paint because it dries so freaking fast. Um, I, I just wanted to pull up some a little bit more white, so I really am kind of dry painting it here. Is that what it's called, dry brush painting? I don't know. You get a little bit of paint and you dab it off your brush and then you just kind of keep pushing <laughs> to get the paint out of your brush. I don't know. Anyways, I think I'm adding too much white now. Katie, you can stop. Anyways, I don't because I just don't know when to quit. I just don't, I just don't quit. So making it a little whiter with my paint and going, just pulling it up, whatever. Uh, that's enough, Katie. I'm ruining it, I'm ruining it. Stop, Katie, stop. But look, I'm dipping, I'm not stopping, I'm dipping. Now I'm going in the bottom. I'm gonna overdo it. 
because Katie doesn't stop. She overdoes it. Oh, look. Just dabbing away. Dab, dab, dab a -roo. You know, I don't know why I say that. Like that Happy Madison film, I think. Is that where he calls it? The tap, 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 tap a -roo? When he's golfing? I always say that when I do stuff. Okay, which is totally off topic. I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay, well, we're still dry brush painting some white because, oh, look, let's go back to the top. What are you doing? Stop, Katie, stop. Cut it out. I think I'm almost done now. Good grief. Oh, look. Hmm. I feel like there needs to be some more blue. <laughs> oh, help me. So, apparently, there needs to be more blue. I didn't like the one shade of blue at the top. Like, I was trying to go for two shades when I did my um, my clay, but it, it just didn't work out that way. So now I'm going in with some dark blue to try to give it that initial look I was going for with the clay that just kind of ended up blending all together. And yeah, so I added dark blue to the top there. And I just kind of messy painted on there because I'm gonna give this some, um, some you'll see here oh, in a little while. I'm gonna go ahead and just shut up now. And as you could see, I could not stop messing with this. So not only did I paint it, I then came in with some paper towel and I tried to wipe a little bit of it off. That didn't work. So I went in and dipped it in my blue, dipped it in my white to try to get a little bit different rub that in and then I ended up adding a little bit of alcohol to try to <laughs> I, this thing is turning into a disaster Katie just stop oh look let's bring in a chip brush we're gonna dry on some white and just kind of go into that but I did purposely actually do this it wasn't because I just didn't stop and had no control I wanted the um is it, you can see the brush leaving all that texture. I wanted that texture on there. So this this was a plan. This wasn't just Katie couldn't stop moment. So I'm just going into the bottom and adding a little bit down there. And then we're going to be done with the paint. Okay, I'm saying stop, we're done. That's enough. Okay, oh, she got more. <laughs> what is she doing? No, just kidding. My dry, my, it was too dry. So I had to get some more to finish the bottom, but once the bottom is finished, I do believe at that point, I am officially done painting, finally. So after that, I don't even know what I did. I gotta fast forward so I can see. So I'm gonna fast forward the rest of this, okay? Okay, after I'm done messing with all of this and my paint has dried for 24 hours, I went ahead and baked it at this point. I forgot to um, record that step. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Record you? showing it into my oven anyways this is now baked and i'm going in with my clay or my chalk paint i paint the bottom of my cup and now i'm just doing some tack it over and over and i'm putting just a little bit of white glue in there for my second coat on um my paint and i'm just painting the cup where it was stainless i'm not doing any more to the waves it's already got enough paint on it oh my um so i'm going to mix up my tack it glue it, that is already diluted with 50% water. I just keep it in the original bottle and add water to it. Um, anyways, so that is tack it and water mix with a little bit of white paint in there to help me make sure I have good coverage um, so I, you don't see any streaks and whatnot underneath of my glitter. So after this is done, we are going to go ahead and go in with our glitter. All right, our tack it over and over water adhesive mixture and our paint mix is applied and ready to go. I wanted to make a glitter that would match this sand that um, there's just sentimental value, I guess. I'm making this cup as a, um, for a dear friend of mine and I wanted to match that sand. So that's what I tried to do. I am going in with It's Pretty Personal's Posh Micro Midnight, the Fine and the XL. We are going in with some mild holographic cheat, some White Lies Kingdom Collection, um, Basics Mother of the Bride. I love that color. Um, a little bit of light and sweet and some Daydream just for a couple of some gold and different chunky sparkles. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyways, I mixed all that into a cup and now we're just gonna dump her on there. I regret using this color in here at all. I used it a couple times. Um, I wish I wouldn't have. So I craft in mostly at night and while this is one of my favorite colors and I do love using it for sand, it wasn't the color of sand I was going for. Um, this is pop bottles, I'm pretty sure. But um, this initial look was okay. Once I added the turtles, I, I added some more and I really regretted it. I, I just, I am not real thrilled. But anyways, it is what it is. It's still really pretty, but I, I just wish I would not have done that. So if you're trying to recreate this cup and you want to use I don't know. I would have skipped it. If I did it all over again, I would skip it. So now I'm going in with my easy tack. I am only going to spray where I have the glitter. I am going to do my absolute best not to get it where I have my clay because I don't want any glitter sticking on my waves. So I went off camera and I sprayed it over my garbage can and now I am going to apply a second coat of glitter. All right, that is done. And you know what? Uh, I don't think I did too bad of a job. I mean, look at that, look at that. Not too shabby. Pat on my back, Katie, good job. Ooh, ooh. So pretty, okay. Anyways, enough of that. So next, what are we doing next? Next, we are getting our scoop, super sculpty, also oven Blake clay, and we are going to make some little baby turtles. Okay. I was off camera and I spent a little bit conditioning this as well. Once again, please ignore my, oh, my hands are so bad. They are just so bad. Okay, so I'm making a little ball that is like a third of the size of a dime, just for size reference there, um, super small. Once you get these on the cup, they look flipping gigantic. So this is one of the smaller ones because as I kept trying to make them, I did get better. Okay, so we're gonna take two fingers, pinky fingers, pointer fingers, whatever, and you're just gonna lightly smash each side. So it leaves that little crease up in the top. But you don't, you wanna leave the roundness for the shell because it's not, they're not flat, I don't think. I've never seen one in real life. Well, I saw one in like an aquarium. Okay, anyways. So now I make a ball, a little teeny tiny ball. I, I don't know the size, it was little. And then I'm just gonna lightly squeeze the bottom of that and just give it a, a half roll in my fingers to try to make it into a teardrop shape. Once I'm happy with my teardrop shape, I just squish that. So it looks like a little spermy or tadpole if you would rather. And then we're gonna attach that to the bottom of our turtle shell. I'm gonna very lightly push it on there because we're gonna add our fins and then we will kind of push them into our shell on the bottom a little bit. So we're gonna set that off to the side. I'm gonna move you closer a little bit anyways. Okay, so now we're just taking another little section. See, it's not much at all. Oh, it looks, I think I need a little more. Okay, so here we go. Now we are just gonna roll this one into a ball and then we're gonna start to roll it into kind of your little worm snaky thingy or whatever you wanna call it. And then, oh, get my knife ready. So now roll it into our little wormy. And then we're gonna kind of do the same thing like we did with our shell. We're just gonna push it, add a little bit of pressure so it's kind of giving us thinner ends and a thicker middle. And then we are gonna cut just right down the center of that middle. And then we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna squish it. Just squish it. There we go, squished. When I like, so when I do the fins, I bend them a little bit and kind of squish it to kind of give it that shape. Um, I did try to make each one slightly different um, with the fin as far as the, the way it was facing or moving or whatever. And um, with, this, with this clay, um, it holds its shape a lot better than the like original Super Sculpty or whatever. This one is definitely more um, for detailed work. It's it's a lot harder. Um, so yeah, anyways, okay, other fin. So I put them up 
close to the top of the shell because um, I googled and that's what it looked like it should be placed to me. <laughs> so now I, I just wanted that a little more pointy I guess so I'm just going in and I'm just kind of adjusting a little bit where I thought it needed adjusted. And now we're going to do the same thing with a little bit smaller of a piece for our little back fins. Are they even called fins? I don't even know. Okay, roll it into a little ball, then we're going to roll it into a little snake, and then we're going to apply a little pressure on each end and cut it straight down the middle and do the same thing. Squish it, squish it, and then apply it to the back. And then once you're done doing that, you cannot forget they have little itty bitty teen tiny tails. So anyways, let's get these little feet made. And I just kind of stick them on there and I just shape them to however I feel like they need shaped. Oh, I think I'm running out of sugar. My sugar high is fading, guys. <laughs> All right, so add our other little fin down there and now we're gonna break off a little teeny tiny piece because we're gonna add that little teeny tiny tail. And I'm just gonna do the same thing, roll it into a little snake and just kind of roll the one end of it to a point or cut it or whatever. And then I apply it to the underneath of his, um, his body until I think it looks like it should. All right, so once we do that, I take my fingers and I kind of put that raised part of the shell in between my fingers so it holds shape a little bit because we are going to apply a little bit of pressure so I am just taking a silicone brush and I am applying pressure and just blending all of these body parts, <laughs> body parts together and just making sure they're all attached, um, attached real well. And then we're going to flip him back over and put him down. And now we are going to add some texture. So at this point, when I made this one, I had already made all the turtles and I was like, oh shoot, I didn't film that part. So here I am making one turtle to show you. And then of course you will multiply it for how many ever turtles you want on your cup. So um, my detail work wasn't very good for this turtle because I was, like I said, I was already kind of over it. So I am just taking this silicone brush that is just um, flat on the top and I'm just gonna make some um, horizontal lines on each side of the little hump there. So, well, it's not on each side, it's on both. It's one continuous line right over the top of it. So I just do lines up and down the whole center. And then I go in with just the tip of my brush and I do so that it's a half triangle to connect each line so that it's just, um, yeah, I don't know how else to explain it. You make a half triangle on each end to connect the lines. And then once we have all of those done, then I don't remember if I went around. Yeah, I'm going around the whole shell. No, nope, I'm still working on the little pieces. Okay, so I go to each point and I make another straight line across. And then once I'm done doing that, I will go all the way around the outside of the shell, just giving him a little trim. So, um, yeah, because that's what it looked like on Google. <laughs> so hopefully my professional sea turtle friend <laughs> doesn't judge my sea turtles too much because I'm sure they are not like she's used to seeing like every day. Okay, so we're doing a little rim job around our turtle shell here. Once that is done, we're going to <clears throat> add, so I'm, oh, let me see how to explain this. I'm just adding little notches, we'll call them notches, into the whole outer rim of the turtle shell because that's what it looked like they look like to me. I don't think they were perfectly smooth. I don't know if I was looking at a certain breed or what, but its shell was not perfectly smooth. It kind of had um, that look going on. So anyways, okay. So now I'm just going to make like basically a checker pattern or not checker I don't know it's just lines up and down oh look there's the tip of my my silicone brush so I do them horizontally and then I do them vertically to just make a checker pattern basically and um, 
I did not try to be fancy or neat um, doing this. I just did a quick job, whatever. So we're gonna do the top fins and the bottom fins. And then I think I bring you for a close up here in just a second. So you can kind of see, oh no, I almost forgot. So I th believe the next thing I do after this is I grab, oh look, I am bringing you up for a close up. So see how he's, he's getting lots of texture. He's so cute. Okay, so now we're gonna go in with something that um, just kind of pointy and we're just gonna give him some little little indentions all over. So this was too sharp. This this didn't work out very well. I used something else for the turtles that are actually on the cup and it worked a lot better. This just went, I don't know if it was my mood or what, but my holes were not, they were too deep. It, it, it didn't work out very well. So just be mindful when you go to make your holes, what you're using, um, going too deep, they looked pretty stupid. So now I'm gonna bake my turtles, as I said. There's the directions on the side. I'm sure y'all can figure that out. If not, well, I will help you read it. Okay, so my turtles at this point are baked. So I need to seal my glitter, okay? So we are going to tape off our waves because I am going to use a uh, spray paint sealer. So I wanna make sure none of that gets on my clay. Even though it has been baked, you want to avoid, um, thanks to Rachel Tentel, I don't know if I said her name right or not. I have learned a lot about clay and clay work from her. Um, I am nowhere near her level yet. Yet, the power of yet. Um, anyways, you don't wanna mix spray paint and clay. They don't work well together. So we are taping that so I don't get any spray paint. I'm going in with a matte finish because that's what I have. It's just a clear matte finish spray paint. That's what I had. Okay, so after that's all sprayed nice and good, now it's time to color our turtle. If I would have thought about it, I probably would have colored my turtle a light green in my clay and then just did this painting step and been done. But no, I had to do things the harder way. Okay, so what we're doing now is we are just taking a paintbrush and we are getting a bunch of paint on there and we want to make sure it gets in every groove and everything there is okay and then we're going to take some paper towel and we're going to dip that into just a little bit of um, rubbing alcohol i don't allow dry time or nothing i go straight into it i paint the turtle and i do this step next <clears throat> excuse me okay rubbing alcohol 91 percent gonna put a little bit on our towel there and now we're gonna rub this paint off of here because we want all of our little detail spots to have the paint in them but I didn't want the whole turtle painted so I just wanted those details to show up in with this darker green and then my goal was to have those darker green and the rest of it um, a lighter green so I'm just kind of cleaning this up and I should be able to show you here in just a second. Getting those little creases where his fins and his body meet. There he is. I didn't bring that very close, did I? Oh, here I come. Okay, so now I attempt to color this with alcohol ink. This one I used blue. The, um, the ones that I did on the cup, I used green and um, it was too dark. So I actually what I, I got them on the cup and everything and I was like, these are just too dark. So I ended up taking a Q-tip with some alcohol <laughs> on it and actually trying to rub some of the color off of the turtles while after I had them glued onto the cup because it just, they were too dark. I did not like it. So the turtles on the cup look like shit. I'm sorry, I hope she still loves me and her cup. Um, anyways, so I went in with a little bit of blue and I really liked the way this color turned out. So I think if I do another one, this is probably the route I'm gonna go as I'm gonna probably um, do my clay in kind of a blue and then paint it with the green and wipe off and be done instead of doing this two-step process. See, look how cute that is. I really like that color so much better than the green. Oh my gosh. Oh well, it is what it is. You live and you learn. Okay, so next, oh look, here's all my green turtles. How cute. They were too dark. 
I just did not like them. But um, they looked darker. Um, I put epoxy on one and I and it really enhanced the color. And I was like, whoa, this can't happen. Okay, UV resin. This is UV resin. We are going to use some UV resin now. I am also going to be using the um, Dawn dish soap, a cup of water, and my UV lamp. This, what I'm putting in here now, is just a little bit of white alcohol ink to color my resin. We're going to stir that up. Mix the UV resin with our um, white alcohol ink. This is Pinata brand. And then we're going to do the old bubble UV light trick. If you haven't seen this, this is a super cool way to, um, to do textures, whether it's mermaid or dragon scale or something. It's, or just the little bubbles. That's what I needed it for. So for my waves, I wanted, um, the little tiny bubbles. So here's my cup of water and this is just regular Dawn dish soap, blue kind. I don't know what kind it is. It's just what I buy. I get the big ass jugs from Costco. <laughs> All right, so I tried blowing in this, but I was getting bubbles that were too big. So I was worried about making a mess. So I um, just went over my garbage can and I really gave it a, a good stir with my my straw there and it's making all those little teeny tiny bubbles instead of great big bubbles like when you blow on it so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my cup as soon as i get it into my hand and then i'm using just an old paintbrush one that's been pretty used and i'm just going to go along this white area and i'm going to go down into my sand just a little bit so we're, i'm going to go i guess i'm doing the top first because that's where i pointed and we're just going to kind of make sure you, I wanted to make sure I got the underneath of that rim and I'm going to go up into, um, into the blue a little bit. And I'm, I'm just going to let you watch through this just cause I don't know, it's kind of cool. So wherever the bubbles are, it kind of separates your, um, your resin from your project. So it, you'll see the white underneath and the blue underneath, whatever. So I don't, when I do this, I just leave it on for like 30 seconds or so, depending on whatever. But when I'm just doing it just to start, I don't wait the whole 90 seconds or whatever it is. I just put it on there long enough that it ain't moving. And then I move on to my next section and then I'll hold my lamp over the whole thing. So here we have it. You can kind of, it's hard to see on camera. You can kind of see the texture there that it's starting to give. It's nice and hard. It is still tacky, but that's okay. So we're just going to continue this process. One thing you want to make sure of, do not forget this. You want to move your paintbrush and you want to move your little mixture of resin and white ink way far away from your light because if it is sitting in your window and the sun is coming in or it is close to your light and your light is hitting that stuff, you're not going to have any. It's going to cure. <laughs> so make sure you move your shit before you put your light on. Okay, so I'm doing the same thing I did before. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we are, I'm going to, I'll end up speeding this up in just a second. I just want to make sure that I'm showing you this part i really get in there to make sure that i'm getting the the smaller bubbles if bigger ones do um come up on my cup i like to make sure that um, i just pop them with my finger so that um we don't i, I don't want big bubbles I'm, I'm looking for the little teeny tiny ones here look i'm quadruple dipping there popping the big bubbles grabbing a little more making sure all my UV resin is covered. Okay, we'll add our light again. I'm wiping my hands on my shirt. <laughs> Hold that there for just a couple seconds so that it has a few minutes to cure and stop moving, but it won't be fully cure. We'll, we'll hold that over. When I get everything the way I want it, then I just do, you know, go over it several times with while turning my cup under the timers to make it cure all the way but just to get it to the design I want I go ahead and just not do the full 90 seconds even though this is feeling like a very long time so once we have that 
don't know, I felt like it needed another second or so. I will take my paper towel or whatever you're using and just dry that off. You can you can feel it why it's why it's curing and be able to tell if it's done or not. Okay, finally I've decided that this is going to be enough and I'm going to grab a paper towel and we're going to dry that off and kind of see what we have going on. And then I will do this all the way around the top. I will do it all the way around the bottom and into a little bit into the sand. And I also go along the, um, the very top of the, um, the cup. So there you can see lot, look at all those bubbles. Isn't that so cool? I love this technique. They're so cool. So there, I said it, we're going to go around the whole top, the whole bottom, a little bit into the sand and a little bit along the top of the cup. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward because this is taking forever. Okay, we are done adding our texture to our waves. So now it is time to glue on our little sea turtle. See how dark that is? I just don't love it. Damn it, Katie. Okay, so I'm just going in with some E6000 and my glitter is still raw, but has been sealed really well. So I have no glitter movement whatsoever. Um, and I, what am I doing here? <laughs> I'm trying to show you the center of the cup. So this is what I have going on now after I have them all glued on. And I think this is after I already lightened them up. I think, yeah, it's possible. I don't know. I can't tell through the video. Anyways. So now after that has dried, I give it 24 hours for the E6000 to fully dry. I am going in with my tack it over and over. I did mix a little bit of white paint in with this because um, I didn't want you to be able to see any of the turtle. So I'm just going in and I'm gonna go around each turtle very carefully underneath their fins and whatnot to, and then I'm gonna add glitter all around them. I'm also going to put a few, um, I don't know what you call it, little ripples or something in the sand um, just to add some different see here I go I'm kind of going off to the side a little bit there I'm just wanting to add a little a little texture to the sand because sand is not flat it's not smooth it's you know it's textured I guess not textured it's just lumpy and bumpy and footprints and whatever stuff anyways okay so I'm gonna do this around each turtle I'm gonna fast forward All right, so now we are playing cleanup and I am just going in with a, um, a pretty rough, stiff paintbrush and I am dusting off all of the turtles so that I don't have um, turtles with a bunch of glitter on them. They're going to have some because I'm just not that good. <laughs> but anyways, cleaning up time. All right, once all of that has had plenty of time to dry, we are going to go in with some epoxy and we are just going to use a paint brush to apply it. And I'm gonna go all around my um, sand glitter and get up pretty up close to my turtles as I possibly can without um, getting a bunch of glitter all over them. <laughs> so I try to get up underneath any fins that are still sticking up um, and whatever. So I try to get all of the glitter area is covered as much as I can and then we're gonna go ahead and let this part here 
Um, the reason I am doing it that way is to try to eliminate how much sand is going to end up on my turtles. So that was my goal. All right, here we are approximately 12 hours later. We have some more epoxy mixed up. I am adding just a little tiny bit of the diamond dust touch of gold for my epoxy additive to add a little bit of sparkle to my turtles, but not anything to take away from them. Just a little something to shimmer. I don't even know if I, I, I don't even know if it did. I don't even know if I had enough added enough to really tell. I kind of forgot I did that. So anyways, we're just going to mix that up real good. And then just like we did for our glitter, we are going to do for our turtles. We are going to grab a paintbrush and we are going to paint over each turtle. Little by little, we want to make sure that we don't um, flood them so they get too blended into each cup. But we want to make sure that every bit of them is covered on the top and the bottom because some of the fins do stick up a little bit. We want to make sure that those are completely epoxied underneath on top. All of that so I am just going in and going to paint every single turtle all the way around under up bottom top all of it all right now that our sea turtles are done we are going to go ahead and go in and we are going to epoxy our waves so I am adding a little bit of pinch of mistress to this one just because I like sparkle and I know the person I'm making this for likes sparkle as well. So I'm adding sparkle to the waves. So doing a little, little bit of a generous amount. Um, just gonna mix that up real good and then I'm gonna use the paintbrush to paint the, the waves. And um, the waves are really kind of pokey. I did not sand these. If they're super pokey, sometimes I will. Um, honestly, I did not expect this cup to be something that she like takes on hikes, <laughs> walks on the beaches, you know, whatever. I wanted this to keep a lot of its texture. Oh look, gloves. I was like, screw this paintbrush and thing. We're gonna do this finger style. Um, anyways, I. It's just not, I don't know. I mean, I guess somebody could use them, but I, I don't think I would ever use a cup like this, like just walking around. So my intentions were not to get this completely smooth because I didn't want to lose a lot of the the details. The more layers of epoxy you put on, it kind of takes away from um, a lot of these details. As you can see now, I mean, look at all those bubbles in these waves, there's a ton. And when you look at it after epoxy, you're gonna see that um, it is just kind of took away from that, th from the rough look of it, uh, which is fine. That's typically what we want, but it's just not quite what I wanted for this. So anyways, I'm just putting the epoxy on. Um, I'm trying to make sure I rub it into each hole because um, there are some you know, deeper spots than not. Anyways, yeah. Okay, we're gonna epoxy the top of that. Once all of that is done, then I will stick it on my turner and um, do another layer of epoxy. And then after that one, I will um, give it a very, very, very light sanding and only do it if there's like a super sharp spot. Because <laughs> some of those, those bubbles on those waves are flipping sharp. So after I kind of do that, then I'm going in with my final layer of epoxy. Don't forget to pop your bubbles. Um, the epoxy layers I did on this were pretty thin. Well, for the first two, they were really thin. Um, so it didn't take much to pop the bubbles. Um, if you're doing a thicker layer around the turtles, you're you're gonna need to be careful because you will end up with, you know, clusters that hide in, in those deep spots. But anyways, add your epoxy and we're gonna let it spin. And like I said, um, before my last layer, I did write a little note on the bottom of um, the cup for her, and I... <laughs> oh, excuse me. 
excuse me, I don't even know where that came from. That just came out of nowhere. Okay, anyways, so this is it. We're all done after this is cured.